barely bought it in this post front. There you go. You got it? There you go. Oh. So that's what that's what you're gonna get a lot when you get post frontal conditions. I mean, yesterday I believe we were 82 degrees and this morning we're about 55 with a 20 mile an hour wind. So we just put this boat in, we've gotten two bites in our first four flips, but they're gonna be there just tick, tick, tick. And that was probably my mistake. I got a little bit too excited on that one. Um, when you're fishing these post frontal bass, you really gotta give them a chance to, uh, to eat that bait. They'll still bite. Getting bites sometimes isn't the problem. It's just getting them pinned up. There's a bite right there. All right, I'm letting them eat it, letting them eat it, and I'm gonna crack them. That's a good one. I tell you, I've been playing around a lot with that Jean LaRue punch out crawl lately. I wrote a review on it, and this is why I like it. Because it's, it seems to catch them when, when even when it's tough. Let me turn this, give myself some line. So yeah, that's what we're dealing with. These fish, that's probably a pre-spawn fish. We got water temperatures in the high 50s. And again, she barely, barely bit it. I mean, it was light, just a little tick. Now I let her swim with it for about three seconds. As you, you can see, that zone lock, WG Magnum worm hook, it really, really pinned her in there. And I'll show you more about this hook once I get it out of her. We've been, won't let her go. That's a pretty fish. And she'll have some babies for us. And what I wanted to show you about this little hook we've been testing, it's a Zone Lock Hooks WG Magnum Worm Hook. This is a three aught. And what it does, it's got that unique little bend in there that pins those fish really well when you when you crack them. Now today, like I mentioned, really post front day and it can be hard getting these fish pinned. You can get the bites, but you you gotta let them chew on it for a while. And this so far has really impressed us. Now I'll re-rig this Jean LaRue punch out crawl and I'll show you. You're gonna rig it just like you would a normal generic worm hook, slide it up there, hook it back right where my thumb is. It sits completely straight. Completely straight, totally flush. I'm not even hooking my finger right now, so I can drag it through trees, grass, whatever, and I'm not gonna get any junk on my hook. Then I'm not gonna expose that hook point for any potential snags. Something else to be cognizant of when you're fishing on these tough post frontal days is rod positioning. Um, even when you're dragging a Texas rig like I am. And I say that because maybe our wonderful editors will edit this in right now. That big old, or not, it wasn't a big fish, but that big bite that I just lost, that was my fault. And I say that because I had my rod tip too high. I call that getting caught with your pants down. So I flipped it in there, casted it in there, and I was up here when she bit, and I didn't have anywhere to go back. A lot of your bites on these type of days, they're gonna be just real thump, and you better be ready to set the hook. I mean, they like to let go. So you got to give your chance, yourself a chance to move a little bit. So that's about as high as I want to take it right there. We're going to get this next one. Oh, there's a fish. Good Lord. God. Dude, that thing was running like, <laughs> she was running like 60 miles an hour at the boat. Well, you're in here. It's not a bad one. Hook just popped out. It's a pretty fish though. These bites are weird, post frontal man. I was just telling you, sometimes they'll thump it, sometimes they'll swim with it. I didn't even feel this. I mean, it was just, my line was coming like a freight train at the boat and I just set the hook and there you go. So many, you're gonna miss so many bites and not even know they happened if you don't watch your line. Like that last fish, I felt nothing. I felt nothing at all. 
And if they hit it from behind, you're not going to feel anything. They're going to push it towards you. And when you got wind, you got a bow in your line, you know, those are the, that's the recipe for missing some fish. So you've got to be able to line watch. You're going to see so many times you'll see your line just tick. It'll just jump just a hair. And that can be a six or seven pounder. So that doesn't always mean it's a small one. When you see these little creeks coming in to smaller bodies of water, that usually is indicative of some sort of ditch. Um, and a ditch, that's kind of a relevant term in my opinion. You know, it, we're probably, I don't know, three or four foot of water here, and that ditch might be four and a half feet of water. So um, ditch is a relative term, but on a fairly featureless body of water, even a depression of six to eight inches can be a big deal. Uh, to a bass, that's all they know, and you know it gives them an opportunity to change depth a little bit. But more or less, I think it just can concentrate bait in here. I mean, they're moving all up in there. There's a bite. I'm let them eat it. I'm gonna crack them. Just like I said in that ditch, it's just a hair bit deeper than the rest of this flat. I mean, you can see, look at the mud that's stirring up in the water. That's how shallow we are. It's 60 degree day, I mean 50 degree day. Quick release.